good day students welcome to standard 6 science class we are going to complete the second video of lesson number 6 substances in our daily use i had given you all a homework to find out the meaning of bhurj patra and dhula patra so i hope you all have found out the answer the example of bhurj patra is given in your textbook there's a diagram given on page number 43 okay so just go through it it's a paper on which ancient scripts were written and dhulpatya is also a similar kind of writing material used for writing now let's get started we are going to start with page number 45 today uh, production of substances so the first substance is rubber so how is rubber manufactured we are going to see it now rubber is of two types natural and artificial natural rubber is obtained from gum or sap of trees and this sap is called as latex please underline the sentence rubber has a peculiar odor and it is white in color so there are rubber trees the sap of these rubber trees is extracted and rubber is made out of it now we'll study the process which is given in the next paragraph and the process of production of rubber is known as vulcanization of rubber there are a few examples given on the screen first is an eraser the second one is a rubber ball second the third one is a toy and the fourth is tires okay so let us see what is vulcanization of rubber in this process rubber is heated with sulfur for 3 to 4 hours now sulfur is a chemical that is added to rubber and it is heated to give hardness to the rubber sulfur is mixed in it the proportion of sulfur in the mixture is determined by the purpose for which the rubber will be used erasers rubber balls toys all have varying proportions of sulfur in them in rubber bands the proportion of sulfur is very less so when you want to make the now the rubber band is very stretchable and soft yes so in such cases you have to add less of sulfur in the production of rubber and when you need an outcome like a tire that is when sulfur is added in larger quantities okay so depending upon the use and the hardness of rubber sulfur is used okay let's move on to the next slide so now this information is given again on page number 45 something for you all to know for your general knowledge charles goodyear spilled a mixture of rubber and sulfur on a on a burning stove after the stove was extinguished he noticed that the rubber had become harder and less elastic he repeated this experiment in a systematic way and invented the process of vulcanization so if i ask you a question who invented the process of vulcanization your answer is going to be charles goodyear hard and tough tires of rubber made henceforth brought about a revolutionary change in transportation the tires that are used for your bikes your scooters your cars trucks all of these tires that we use are a revolutionary invention and who made this invention it was done by charles goodyear so i have put up a picture for you which is not there in your textbook for you to see who the person was and the goodyear rubber and tire company is named in honor of charles goodyear it is the world's largest tire company okay you all must have heard about it goodyear tires okay we have one or two shops in lonavla so who this the name which is given to the tires it is given in honor of this scientist his name is charles goodyear okay let's move on to the next slide do you know rubber is a natural substance obtained by collecting the latex of a certain tree what is that tree a rubber tree rubber trees are found in abundance in brazil so outside india in brazil it is found in large quantities okay the picture of the tree is given for you all to see and see the cut that is made on the tree to extract the gum or the latex out of it later these trees were planted in other countries too and the botanical name of this tree is hevea brasiliensis in india the maximum production of rubber is in kerala okay so where is kerala everybody knows it is down south so maximum number of rubber trees are in 
Kerala in India and outside India it was in abundance in Brazil okay the next diagram that you see is the diagram which explains the use of machinery in manufacturing of paper what is the process that it goes through so take a close look at the picture and the explanation of the same is given in the next slide for you all just take a look at the picture the first thing that you see is tree the tree is cut down like you uh, peel a potato the same way the bark of the tree is peeled and the log is put inside a machine that machine that then makes it into a fine powder or a coarse powder which goes into those circular things can you see that the third thing and then after that there are dyes added which forms a pulp this pulp is dried and pressed to make sheets and the sheets are rolled you can see the cylindrical uh, the sheets are uh, folded in a cylindrical way at the end winding the paper on reels can you see that so that is how the paper is manufactured so this is the process of manufacturing paper now let us see what they have explained the explanation is given on page number 46 production of paper so now we have seen production of rubber the second thing that we are seeing is production of paper paper is a substance or material formed due to the intertwining of the cellulose fibers in grass wood rags or waste paper now what is cellulose fibers cellulose fibers are somewhat like starch they are sticky that substance is used to make paper thus paper is a kind of network of cellulose fibers okay they all come together intertwining is coming together or bringing them together to form sheets of paper how is paper made coniferous trees where are these coniferous trees found they are found in snowy regions in one of the previous lessons we have seen what is the use of coniferous trees or why they are adapted to a particular region okay so coniferous trees like pine are used to make paper the bark of the logs of these trees is first removed and the wood is broken into small pieces the mixture of these pieces and some chemicals is kept soaking for a long time it helps to form a pulp okay a pulp is a thick liquid so what example can i give you for pulp for example aloe vera pulp which comes out of an aloe vera plant that is pulp so a mixture of that same consistency is formed when the chemical process is completed the fibrous substances from wood pulp are separated and some dyes are added the pulp is then passed through rollers dried to form paper and finally wound on reels okay it becomes dry the pulp becomes dry when it passes through the rollers and paper is formed this paper is then rolled on the reels or wound on the reels paper and wood are closely related okay so to save trees it is necessary to use paper sparingly everyone knows that paper comes out of coniferous trees so there is a lot of cutting down of trees that happens whenever you are using papers you should be first thing you should be environment friendly try to make use of less paper use it sparingly okay always remember do not tear up blank pages of a notebook do not throw away old notebooks use their blank pages everyone is supposed to follow this you are going to remember this the blank sides of advertising pamphlets inner sides of postal envelopes the blank sides of calendar pages and other such writable surfaces can be used to make notes lists to cover books etc do not throw away or burn up such paper until it has been fully utilized like this okay so everyone has understood the second point also the third point whenever possible try to use a pencil and slate fourth point cooperate with people who collect paper from garbage or buy scrap paper these people help in the proper recycling of resources understood okay let's move on to the next slide do you know which is given on page number 46 in india the first factory to manufacture new sprint or the paper to be used for newspapers was established at nepanagar in madhya pradesh in the year 1955 
Paper is also manufactured at Sonagarh in Gujarat. In Maharashtra, there is a paper factory at Ballarpur near Chandrapur. Understood everyone? So this is for you to know, this is for your general knowledge. Okay. So where is the first factory to manufacture newspapers or the newsprint established? It was established at Nepanagar in Madhya Pradesh. And in Maharashtra, it is in, where is it? Ballarpur, which is near Chandrapur. Okay, so just remember these two or three points. Okay, now for you to find out, but I'm going to answer the question anyway. Where was the process of making paper invented? So the process of making paper was invented in China. Second question, what kind of paper is used for our textbooks and what size is it? So let us, let, let me see how many of you all can guess. You all must have been to a Xerox shop where the person must have asked you on what size paper do you want a Xerox or you all must have visited with your parents. So I don't know if you all have come across it or not, but this question is for you to answer. Just think for a minute. What kind of paper is used for our textbooks and what size is it? Let me see if anyone, uh, let, let us see. Give some work for your brains. So let me answer the question for you children. It is the A4 size paper. Okay, your textbooks are made of A4 size and the paper is known as cream verve paper. Okay, also the thickness of the paper is 70 GSM, capital G, capital S and capital M. So the textbooks are made of paper called cream verve. The size is A4 and the thickness is 70 GSM. Okay, next question. How is paper for currency notes manufactured? So in India, the paper that is used for our currency, 10 rupee notes, 20 rupee notes, 500 rupee note, the 2000 latest new note, 2000 rupee note. How, how is the paper for it manufactured? So it is made from the cotton pulp. Okay, cotton pulp, balsam and some special kind of dyes that are used to make the paper. It's all starchy material. Okay. After that, a layer of gelatin is applied on the currency notes. You see the notes are not uh, very rough, somewhat uh, slippery or you can say there is some shine to it. Okay, Therefore, they remain crisp and straight. Little shine to it and gelatin, what does it do? It makes them crisp and straight. There is not, not a lot of crumbling of the notes. That is because of the gelatin. It is important and that is how the notes are the paper is manufactured for our currency okay all right let's move on to the next slide can you tell from which substances in nature can we get threads or fiber from what what are the substances that helps uh, that help us in getting threads or fiber thread for what for our clothes yes or no so can you all tell me you all already know cotton Okay, cotton is grown, there is jute. So give me more examples. So we get threads and fibers from cotton. We get it from wool, jute, silk and hemp. Silk also I am very sure you all know. Right? So the question was quite easy. Let's move on to the next question. What are clothes made from? Clothes are made from all these fibers. Easy? What are, what are the types of fibers? From where do we get the fiber? Cotton, wool, jute and silk okay etc and the clothes what are the clothes made from the clothes are made from the fibers of these threads or these kind of fibers what are those again cotton wool jute and silk remember at least these four okay do you know silk is a natural thread or fiber obtained from the cocoons of silk worms the image of the silkworm is given on page number 46. The extreme right hand side corner down. Okay. From one cocoon 500 meters to 1300 meters of thread can be obtained. It is said that silk was first produced on a large scale in China. So silk first produced in China. And what other thing was produced? What process started in China first? We saw paper correct okay so please remember this move on to the next slide synthetic fibers or threads we know fibers or threads are obtained from cotton 
जूट सिल्क एंड एंड वॉट एल्स हेम यस सो लेट्स सी वॉट आर सिंथेटिक फाइबर्स और थ्रेड दीज आर ऑल नेचुरल सोर्सेस राइट और नॉट ना लेट एस सी वॉट आर सिंथेटिक सोर्सेज और आर्टिफिशियल सोर्सेज फ्रॉम द टाइम इट वॉज फर्स्ट थॉट दैट आर्टिफिशियल यॉन यान कुड बी प्रोड्यूस टू मीट द क्लोदिंग नीड्स ऑफ एन इंक्रीजिंग पॉपुलेशन मच रिसर्च एंड प्रोग्रेस हैज टेकन प्लेस इन दिस फील्ड इन्यूमरल काइंड ऑफ सिंथेटिक और आर्टिफिशियल थ्रेड्स आर नाउ अवेलेबल ना ड्यू टू द एवर इंक्रीजिंग पॉपुलेशन इट्स नॉट पॉसिबल फॉर दीज नेचुरल सोर्सेज ऑफ थ्रेड और फाइबर टू मीड द डिमांड ऑफ द पॉपुलेशन सो वी नीड टू फाइंड एन ऑल्टरनेटिव सो पीपल स्टार्ट इन मैन्युफैक्चरिंग क्लोथ्स और द फाइबर विच इज़ नीडेड फॉर द क्लोथ्स इन एन आर्टिफिशियल वे ओके टू मीड द एवर इंक्रीजिंग डिमांड so then what happened what was made nylon dacron terylene terene polyester rayon are the names of various synthetic threads so all these you might have seen when you when you buy uh, say for example a t-shirt from a shop okay inside you see the contents you see what is it made up of it's 100% cotton or it is a mixture it is rayon okay it's wool woolen is what your sweaters are woolen okay so you know what is the material what material is used for the manufacturing of the clothes so this is a small activity for you all to do you all can just check in any of your clothes the tag which is there behind it mentions what is the cloth made up of okay so it could be nylon dacron terylene terene polyester rayon these are all artificial fibers it could be a mixture of all these also along with something natural so almost all the articles made from natural fibers in the olden days can now be made from synthetic threads nylon rayon terylene acrylic are all synthetic threads and many articles in our daily use are made from them now let us see how nylon got its name and what more can we know about nylon so it's an artificial thread they were invented at the same time in new york and london therefore the initials are capital n capital y of new york and l o n from london they were combined to name nylon that's how the name has come nylon because of new york and london they were manufactured at these places at the same time that's why the name is nylon they have a shine and are strong transparent and water resistant they are used to manufacture clothes fishing nets and ropes you must have seen the fishing nets uh, uh, nets which are very very shiny okay those are made out of nylon even your clothes which have shine to them those are nylon clothes okay thin material shiny that is nylon now rayon cotton and wood pulp is dissolved in a chemical called sodium hydroxide to make a solution and out of this solution threads are obtained with the help of machines as these threads have shine and strength they are said to be synthetic silk so rayon is known as synthetic silk because it has a lot of shine and it has a lot of strength okay they appear to be shining bright like the sun's rays hence the name rayon understood the next thing dacron terylene and terene so we have seen nylon we have seen what have we seen after nylon rayon which is also which is uh, known as rayon because it is bright like the sun's rays okay now we let's move on to dacron terylene and terene various hydrocarbons obtained from mineral oils are used to make polymer chains a solution of such a polymer is pressed through a strainer with fine holes now what is a strainer something that you use for straining your tea at home a similar kind of a strainer is used not that small it is obviously huge in size but i am just giving you all an example what is a strainer the fibers formed after cooling are long and unbroken threads these threads are twisted to obtain yarn okay 
different types of chemicals are used to make threads of various properties and these different threads have been named variously as tephron terylene and terene when different different chemicals are used to make uh, or manufacture the fiber in such a way straining through fine holes and cooling to obtain unbroken threads are known as tephron terylene and terene okay now there's a new word over here that's come up it's polymer chains and hydrocarbons so what are hydrocarbons hydrocarbons are the substances obtained from mineral oil okay so mineral oil gives hydrocarbons and these hydrocarbons are used to make polymer chains now what are polymer chains long continuous chains formed by small interlinked chemical units you all know a chain which you put across a gate okay interlocking is a interlocking between two loops a similar polymer chain is obtained in a chemical process and that is used to extract or make that gives rise to decron terylene and terene that is the science behind it you can just remember this and also learn what is hydrocarbons and polymer chains now these are the images of all the different synthetic fibers okay and the uses of it first images of a curtain which is quite shiny second is that of a shirt a jacket rope and you see fibers of different different colors socks probably made out of wool yeah or it could be any other materials for like for example it could be nylon then there is uh, again there is some thread and a few other clothes probably velvet or some other artificial thread which is extremely shiny in color could be decron terylene or terene so these are the few examples which are also given on page number 47 of your textbook let's move on to the next page on the next page we are going to see the advantages and shortcomings of synthetic fibers so what are the pros and cons or what are the good and the bad sides of synthetic fibers so let's first see the first point of advantages or let's do this we just go through the advantages at first and then we'll go through the shortcomings okay so what are the advantages of synthetic fibers these fibers can be manufactured on a large scale they can be manufactured on a large large scale because you're making it you don't have to wait for the nature to give you okay the second thing they cost less okay that means they are not very very costly third point they are strong and durable okay fourth point they can be used for a long time so they will last for a very very long time they are water repellent hence do not rot or get wet they dry also easily usually in rainy season people try to use artificial fibers i mean the artificial the clothes made out of artificial fibers like for example nylon or rayon why because they will dry fast and they'll not they'll not catch fungus they are lightweight and comfortable to wear as they have a shine they enhance the appearance of the wearer and clothes made from these threads are wrinkle free and scratch free you don't need a lot of ironing to these clothes okay unlike cotton you don't have to sit and iron these clothes very often now what are the shortcomings like we said they are water repellent that is why they dry fast obviously hence they do not absorb sweat from the skin that's why you should avoid wearing synthetic fibers during summer season because during summer you are going to perspire a lot so it's very important that you wear cotton clothes okay continuous use of clothes made from these threads keep the skin moist which may cause skin diseases because it is not going to absorb the sweat correct so it may give rise to some skin diseases synthetic clothes are uncomfortable to wear especially in summer okay next synthetic fiber or the fabric catches fire easily when you are working in front of the gas there are high chances that synthetic fiber is going to catch fire very very easily 
synthetic fabric catches fire fire easily if they catch fire the cloth sticks to the skin and causes serious injury so you have to be very careful and these fibers are not decomposed by microorganisms so they are not environmental friendly yeah they are not going to decompose because they are not natural they are made out of chemicals so they are not environment friendly and they will not be decomposed now what we have learned we use two types of materials they can be natural and man made natural materials may be biotic or abiotic biotic materials are either of plant or animal origin rubber paper and synthetic fibers are important man made materials in our daily use we have seen the production of rubber we have seen the production of paper and we've also seen how synthetic fibers are manufactured okay man made materials are obtained by using certain processes always remember save trees to save nature save paper to save trees use paper properly and economically make full use of it and recycle the used paper although there are some disadvantages in using synthetic fibers they can be useful if they are used in a proper way because they reduce the load on the use of natural resources okay with this we are done with the lesson next i'll be uh, doing a video which will be model reading for you all and also i'll be sharing the question answers so i want you all to note down the important points you all will write always remember and what we have learned in your notebooks okay all the notes should be completed in your notebook and if at all you have any queries regarding this lesson you can get back to me okay for now we are done with the lesson have a wonderful day ahead thank you children